today we are very, very lucky to welcome Tom Henschel. Tom, for the for more than 30 years, Tom Henschel has helped hundreds of senior leaders achieve the look and sound of leadership. And we're going to get into this because this is really the, at the heart of what Tom is an expert in. Uh, his expertise as a communication coach has taken him into executive offices at companies such as Amazon, Citigroup, HP, Netflix, Toyota, Warner Brothers, some great companies. Among the world's three million podcasts, Tom's show, The Look and Sound of Leadership, airing since 2008, is ranked the top 1% of most popular podcasts in the world. Welcome, Tom, to Next Gen Leaders Podcast. Thank you so much, Martin. That was, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, to be very honest, Tom, I could have, your, your introduction is phenomenal and we could have gone a lot more into what you've achieved and what you've done over your career. But what you're doing in relation to your coaching is at the core of a lot of things that we talk about at Straight Out, which is around communication. So, yeah. but before we get into that, the piece of communication and the importance of leaders in communication, you started actually opening up about there is no rule book. And I, mm. I, I really thought that was an interesting segment, segue into uh, talking about what you do and how you actually work with your clients. Yeah, there is no rule book referred to where we are at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I feel really lucky about is that I get to parachute into all different kinds of companies, usually talking to people pretty close to the top. Um, kind of getting to see what's happening, but in all different kinds of companies and all different kinds of businesses. And so I get to see leaders coping with this moment in time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is no rule book, boy. Nobody knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing their best. Oh, well. And so the best in one place looks pretty crappy at the other place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, yep. but everybody's doing their best. And there is just is no rule book. And some leaders, this is my observation, Martin, some yep. leaders really are graceful in it and um, growing in it. And some leaders are kind of paralyzed by it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. interesting. So when you're thinking about the no rule book piece, because I think that is a great acknowledgement of the state we are in. Right. right. And yeah, as we come so. out of the pandemic, as we look at, you know, remote distributed working, so I've talking to a lot of leaders who said, I'm just not going to get the teams back to work, uh, back to the office. Sorry. Um, and that is sort of a, it's a new way of thinking about how to communicate, how to lead, uh, for example. Yeah. So what's your thinking in relation to that? What, what What's important for leaders when we think about managing a no rule book policy or the new way of working? Well, I think the burden on the leader becomes to really, uh, really know his or her preferences. Mm -hmm the leader is going to have to make a ton of decisions. Mm. You could decide to call everybody back in the office. Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. You could do that as a leader or not, yeah. right? And it's going to reflect you and it's going to reflect your values because there is no rule book. So I think the leaders have to become very uh, clear and visible in ways that they've never had to before. Mm. They've, they're having to think about things they've never thought about before and they still have to run their business. Yeah. And the business is, is wacky. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a hard time. Yeah. It's just a hard yeah. time. Yeah, and that that's really interesting. I and I, I have actually mentioned this a couple of times on episodes prior. Um, and this is 2013. This conversation, by the way, nearly a decade ago, when wow. I was, when I was with you know what I believe consider it the the individual closest to me, who I think is the best leader um, that uh, I've ever come across. I remember having a conversation with him in 2013 and I said to him, how do you lead when you're not in the same room as everyone? Oh, wow. Back in, yeah, Back in 2013, right? I said, because your energy is incredible and I can see people feed off you. But the reality is you're going to see them for an hour and a half. And for one person that may motivate them for a year for the next person that may be 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So how do you lead? Now it's interesting that same leader, is very challenged by not having everybody in the environment. That's really oh, interesting. Really? Yeah. yeah. And it's really interesting. So, so what's some of your advice to us leaders about how do we actually manage uh, moving forward, the, whether it's communication or leadership style? Boy, let me just speak about it in terms of 
leaders in their teams. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just with a group. These were about 60 people Mm -hmm. who, who had come from all over the globe and were seeing each other again for the first time in essentially three years. Yeah. And the energy in that room, even for the new people, the energy was so uplifting. It was such an, everybody was so glad to be together. There's something to be said for that kind of energy exchange that, yeah. look, you can have the best freaking Zoom meeting ever with great facilitation and it can go perfectly, but it's never going to feel like that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think it's important to be able to harness that when you can because mm-hmm. it, boy, it was exciting. Yes. It was great yeah. times. They had yeah. a great time together, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, so let's talk about communication for, for uh, the importance of it because it does take different forms today. All right, in relation oh to communicating as a leader. So let's talk about some of those things that, you know, w- w- yeah, w- I, I, I want to let you lead the response because I'm not sure if it's implementation of communication strategy or is it more taking the first step, which is really understanding what your communication style is, what you want to achieve, and then working out a plan from there. But let's talk about the importance sure. of communication as a leader. So here's what I listen for. So I, when people say, what do you coach on? When that's mm. what they say to me, I say communications coaching, executive presence, you know, the look and sound of leadership. So communications coaching is how I listen to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, listen, people tell their story pretty quickly around. Mm. Uh, they'll tell you who they think they are. Yep. They'll tell you, right. I'm, so when I think about communication, I want people to be really clear about what's the priorities. What do you want to tell me about? You need to be conscious Mm -hmm. because you are, this is my phrase, the actor on the corporate stage. Mm -hmm. We're watching you. You're like a celebrity. You're our leader, right? So if you speak a certain way, I get permission to speak a certain way or Mm -hmm. whatever that is, right? Mm, That's really interesting. Yeah. So the communication issue to me is one of responsibility, paying attention, making choices, being showing, are you showing up the way you want to show up? Mm. If I asked 10 people to describe you, would they describe you the way you want me to describe you? Mm. You know what I mean? Would yeah. they? Because that's all about how they experience your communication. Yeah. This is, this is, <laughs> you know, as you, as you talk, my, my mind goes into different places. Uh, and just on a personal note right now, my son is the captain of his football team. Uh-huh. And, it's, and, it, and it's really interesting. And he's only 14. And he was captain last year, 13 years old. And it was interesting. The coach, when he realized my son was going to be in his team, he goes, he's this position and he's my captain. And I went, wow, captain. I would never yeah. have seen him as a captain. Right? But he just saw qualities in him as a young man. He also saw how people reacted to him as a young man, which even I didn't see, to be very honest. No, but one thing you said that's really interesting is, and in the in the heat of battle, our games are very physical. Um, our football games, our rugby leagues games are very physical. In the heat of battle, it's it's really hard to keep your emotions, especially if you're a hormonal 13, 14-year-old young man. And he gets over the top sometimes. And as I said to him was, the minute you say something, especially to the referee, you give permission to everybody else to say something. And you just wow. you just you touched yeah, yeah you just touched on that. So let's talk about that for a second. So how do you help leaders recognize their level of behavior because it does have a profound impact on everybody around them? Well, listen, it's always interesting when people call me in and ask me to coach. Either they might call me themselves, will you coach mm-hmm. me? Or or you know, the boss or an HR person might say, Would you coach that guy? Right. Yeah. Um in any case, they're gonna they're gonna say this is what we think we're working on. To which I go, okay, that's helpful. Yeah. Like, what is it? Is uh, I mean, I remember one of the first executives I ever coached. What I was told was she has sharp elbows. Mm. Mm. That's what I heard from the organization. But then it was like, what does that mean? Right now, we got to figure it out. We got to be good detectives. Mm-hmm. What does it really mean? So I think it's really important that leaders get some good feedback. Yeah, pardon me, get some good feedback, and then have a way to act on the feedback and mm-hmm. decide what's right and what isn't. Yeah. I don't mean right, but yeah. I mean valid. Yes. Yeah. So and I, I don't I, know what that sounds like. No, I, that's interesting because when I was looking through, because we approached you to come on to this show 
right? You have a, a profound expertise in communication and leadership, which we're very passionate through our technology to help leaders not just roll it out to their teams, but really participate in everything. Yes. Take that energy that you've got in a room and how do we make that live 24-7, for example. Mm. Um, mm. And the idea of understanding our style, and I, I sort of look at it in a way that we can only change if we listen, one, um, and then we really understand, two, and then we have the ability to agree or disagree with it. But if we agree with right. it, put a real plan in place. I put a real plan in place and allow everyone to understand you're going through this journey as well. Well, that's interesting. I just had a woman today who said, I'm concerned about my team knowing that I'm getting coaching. Yeah, she was right. embarrassed about it, right? Yeah. She wasn't sure she wanted her team to know. And I'm like, I understand. I understand everything about that, but I feel so differently about it. Mm. I feel like coaching mm. is a declaration. Yes. is a, Coaching is a commitment to say I'm taking resources from the company mm -hmm. to improve whatever it is, right? And then I'm going to be a better whatever communicator, better leader, better manager, better whatever it is. And I'm going to work with a professional mm -hmm. to get some school, some tips, yes. you know, like, yeah, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Um, so I always want people to own it. That's, and by the way, if I'm going to go in and do a, like a 360 on you, a 360 degree feedback report where I'm going to actually talk to people about you. Yes. Everybody's going to know you're getting coaching. <laughs> the cat is yeah. out of the bag. It is, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. but, but the idea of, because uh, we we're talking about an example earlier of a previous guest. Um, and as that person went through the senior ranks, it was to, to a point, it was detrimental, the communication style. It was mm. detrimental. And it wasn't until they got to the other other side of that feedback, to the other side of the how other people perceived their style, were they able to really understand it. So they could then, and then they went again. They jumped again. Um, it's, ama it's an amazing journey. Can I tell you a story? Um, Please. I've never forgotten this. So I've been coaching for over 30 years and fairly early in my time as a coach. So this is many, many years ago now, but I've never forgotten it because it's never happened before or since. Mm -hmm. I was asked to coach a guy who was multiple PhDs, who was running a lab for a tech firm, and he was a tyrant. Mm -hmm. He was a mean man, mm -hmm. and people were frightened of him. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to coach him, and I was like, okay. I mean, that was fine. I, that didn't scare me. I was all for that. Like, yeah. oh, that sounds yeah. good. I'm good. Yeah. So... Uh, the first thing I do is I get a bunch of feedback from about him. And it's all these comments about mm. he's scary, he's intimidating, blah, 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 blah. I hand this man this report. This is a man who is like got a brain that is so gigantic. He read the report and he was shocked. Mm. He had no clue. And he looked at me and he said, I he said the words, I had no wow. idea. Yeah. And I thought. Are you kidding me? Like, really? You didn't know that? And But well, you know what? And here's why I'm telling you the story. That man changed that day. Yeah, wow. With no yeah, coaching right. from me. Yeah. I didn't do anything with that guy. He did. Mm. Like, literally, like somebody flipped a switch in this guy. That's bizarre, Martin. Yes, That's weird. Yeah. That's, and it's never happened, ever, you know, before or since. Yeah. Because most people get the feedback. And then the question is, how to apply it? And how do I practice it? And what does it mean? And how would it look different? Most people need some help yes yeah that that's interesting because you can either go the other side you could say great feedback <clears throat> whatever but i'm going to continue and it, actually i was having this conversation only yesterday about a very prominent person here in australia and, and when i met them it was and when i i've seen all of the social and the and that it was so much about them <clears throat> it really didn't include anybody else in the reality <laughs> Of of what success look like, and that person is very open about saying if they're not going to do the job the way I need it, I just find other people to do it. Hmm. So you okay. can and, and doesn't mean you're not going to be successful. And that person chose that path, so change wasn't in their element. They just said, "I know where I'm going. I'm going to get there. And by the way, I'll just find people who fall in line with what I need." And there's a lot of leaders like that, right? There's a lot of leaders. People who then join those leaders have that decision: is that the way I want to be led? And if it is fantastic, but there are other paths to build a career with with um, uh, different leaders. Call them different leaders because whether it's good or bad is is, uh, is someone else's judgment. 
Yeah, listen, I, I think almost all of us have bosses, mm -hmm. right? I mean, really, almost everybody has a boss, even a CEO. We, we, has a we boss. all have bosses, <laughs> and Correct. right. And so there's somebody that you have to, at some point, decide gets to choose. Mm. And getting clear about that, I think, mm. is important. Because a lot of times, I don't know, I, a lot of times I think people, I think there is lack of clarity about mm -hmm. where That's what is point. mine and what is not, right? Yeah. And so there is a communication issue, Martin, where I mm. go, are things really clearly defined at the senior executive level? Do people really know? And usually they do. Come on. I'm yeah. sorry. Let me take that back. Because yep. at the senior executive level, yes, people know. One of the, so can I do a communication observation? Yes. So here's an observation that I have. One of the ways that I think we decide about people in terms of where we place them in a kind of hierarchy is around their, quote, altitude. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like I had someone the other day tell me a story and I swear she took like 20 minutes to tell me this story. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it was not a consequential story. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, we really got into the weeds on that. Like mm -hmm. it was like blow by blow by blow by blow. Like, okay, I got the whole rundown for the whole week. Like, but I wasn't sure what the point of the story was. Right. You know what I mean? That was at a pretty low altitude. Mm -hmm. And it's, I want to be clear. There's a time for that. There's a time for that. But it helps me understand where she thinks mm. about her own life, right? Yeah. How can she observe what's happening to her? And I find, I don't know, I'm guessing you have it too. Like if you're trying to cover two generations of your family, you're going to talk at a different altitude yes. than if you're talking about your son and that game and being captain. Mm. It's a different altitude. Yes. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it is. It is. And what I'm finding with the younger generation, less is more. Say more about that. What do you mean? Less, less is more. They want very pointed to the point. They don't want the dad to drag on with things. Dad, can you just stop talking? They they oh, want the okay. they want they want the the Snapchat bite size information to absorb. I can then get it into my brain and work out if I you know they haven't worked out the concept of agree disagree as opposed to they're processing it. Um, but yeah, so that bite size information as opposed to the person who wants to talk about it for an hour. Boy, well, the whole idea of that speed of work, I think has been really interesting for, for example, teams mm -hmm. on Zoom yeah. internationally, right? That there's one part where it's like, boy, this was easy. We can make this happen. But it's also got that liability to it around the kind of electronic emptiness or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's like, uh, yeah, we live in a different world, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just... Different, and none of us understand it. None of us are sure. Well, well let's let's look the other way because I've got some um, thoughts around here about. Um, I, I saw something on your LinkedIn around skills. What skills do you need when emotions run high? Which I really liked that thought. Mm. Can I can I just? Um, what do you? Let's flip the script for a second. I'm sure. a leader. Li I'm a leader listening to this. What are our teams looking for when it comes to communication? Well, I think one of the things they want is clear and cl clear, unambiguous mm. responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I have a chart that I use with teams that is unbelievably simple. It is like the simplest thing in the world. Like you're going to go, why didn't I think of this? Yeah. Every member of the team, every member of the team has a row, a column, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And going across, you just list the tasks. Yeah. And the first thing you're looking for is who has what we call the big R. Mm -hmm. The big R means you're responsible. You're it. It yeah. ends with you. That if there's any question, you're the person to come to yes. and nobody else, right? Only one big R. There can only be one. Yes. And just yeah. doing that, it's amazing. So yeah. as a leader, if you can help your team understand stuff like that, oh my goodness, it's yeah. so helpful. Yeah. You know, the, it's it, that's really interesting because, it, uh, you know, that I was talking about that leader in 2013. Yeah. Um, and we've now, we're very blessed to have done this. And this was part of what our, our vision uh, was in relation to leadership, setting the purpose and the clarity of it. Yes, we have the layering of the plan, but that was really just the 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 
that's what we do, right? That's what we do. And as you, as you rightfully pointed, some people do it better than others. <laughs> yes, right. some people um, do. But it was really getting down into that work part that you're talking about. That was really the, the key crux of how leaders can play more of an active role of setting the clear clarity purpose, yep, but also then participating and acknowledging the work that's being done live. And this was a real, real, real passion and, and vision of what how we saw the workforce of the future. Um, and just to give you an example, if you're a leader that has the ability to look across all work, you know what's really powerful from our side one it's open collaboration so everyone cross-functionally can come in give a love heart a thumbs up great but the leader can just simply either give a thumbs up or write something and that moment the individual who's working on that piece of work has just gone wow right it's not retrospective a week down the track or a quarterly down the track where i get acknowledged for the work it's live it's moving forward and they're adding value to help me be more successful and mm -hmm. they're contributing as leaders and that culture element just elevates um, through that. So it's really interesting. You talk about the team scenario because it's something, and we're partners of Microsoft Microsoft uh, platform and the idea of, but it was really, how do we connect leaders with the, the daily work was very passionate and it's so simple by design, but so impactful for me as the individual um, of how we move something forward. Yeah. Which is very cool. Very cool. So now let me get to this question. What skills do you need when emotions run high? Because no doubt communication is the most Ooh. important thing. And you talk about body language. You talk about quite a few things uh, when you talk about the leadership approach. Well, well, if there's two things you need to be able to do when emotions run high, it's, and one of them I've already mentioned, the idea of self-awareness, you know, what mm -hmm. am I really saying, right? But self-awareness and then self-management self-awareness and self-management and they happen in a cycle you know they go back and forth so really the self-awareness of i am about to hit this person right. i am so freaking yeah. angry like i seriously like i can't oh now i can give you some stories right? so <laughs> that's self-awareness but yeah. now i have to also self-manage yes. and not hit the person right? yeah i mean seriously like self-awareness self-management and look it works on the micro level Yes, that's yeah. how you learn to stop saying um, uh, self awareness, self management, right? So, what do you need when emotions run high? You need to be able to do both those things. Self be self aware. Like, what are you feeling? Where do you feel it in your body? What does it sound like? What's happening to your breath right now? Are you? What does your face look like? Like self aware. Stop. Listen. Right. Mm. And then make a choice. Really, what do you choose to do? Do you choose to hit this person because it's on you? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is really interesting because what you, what you would like to think, if you're an aspiring leader, you're heavily influenced by people around you. Other leaders might be you know, people you're reading about, et cetera, right? Parents, family, all that yeah. type of stuff. If you're, sure, a leader you're going, yeah. if you're a leader going through that emotion for the first time, which you will do as a leader, you will have those moments as a young leader. And I could give you an example, but I can't air it uh, of exactly that example. We've all been there. We yeah, know. exactly. Yeah. And then when you move forward and go through those emotions, you then start to handle it differently when you see it again. And then when you Some see it Some people, again, I, Martin, that's not guaranteed. Yeah, that right. is not guaranteed. Yeah. There are plenty of people who are in patterns where they repeat their behavior for years. Mm -hmm. For years. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, they do. And they're ingrained and yeah. And it does happen. It just so, does. So self-awareness and self um, management, management, which I love. Let's talk about self-management for a moment because self-awareness is understanding the circumstance, your feelings, how you were going to react and you know, what was the, what was the scenario, right? Uh, how you felt. But, 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 but self-awareness is in real time. Yes. Yeah. As it's happening, it's not reflective. Yes. It's in real time. Right now, what am I feeling? Right yeah. now, what am I feeling? No, right now, what am I feeling? Like, that's self-awareness. And that's every relationship too, Tom, isn't it? <laughs> but of course it is, right? I mean, but it's how you're capable of showing up. Of course, absolutely. Self-awareness is like, yeah, that's a tool that's that you get to choose every day. Right. Because <laughs> yes. oh, it's amazing. Because I, I, I saw, actually, 
just before I was going to bed last night. It was a, a quote around uh, it all stops and starts with leadership. I can't remember the exact quote, but it was interesting. It was from a management consultant. And, I, I'm, and my thought went to, well, in my definition, everybody's a leader. So mm. does it start and stop with leadership? And, and let me flip the coin for a second. Okay, we have leadership up here. And then we have, you know, teams, right? Teams and, and individuals make up those teams. But is your, is your, do you have a, a belief that everyone is a leader at the end of the day? Because you touched on that word responsible, responsibility. I think it was the R. So um, let me if I'm that person who owns that, aren't I the leader in that moment? Well, let me just tell you, I've got two things in my head. When you go, is everybody a leader? I have been part of a what's called a progressive education elementary school here. These are mm -hmm. children from, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade mm -hmm. who are taught in a particular way. And if if you ask me, is everybody a leader? I want to go. Everybody in that school is a leader. Mm -hmm. The school mm -hmm. secretary is a leader in that school. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's a leader in that school and certainly the children. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's so inspiring. Yeah. So is everybody a leader? Yes, indeed. That's one group for me. The other group for me truly are the people that I coach when yeah. I think of leadership coaching. These are people who have certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. They have P&L responsibilities. They have employees. They have stocks. They have got, I mean, they've got huge teams of yes. thousands of people sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah, these are people, that's where I go with the second thing of leadership. But it's kind of everybody in between, sure. Yes, you yeah. Hear, but you hear the difference from me. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I love it. And and just so when we think about the leadership coaching side of it um, and well, actually, can, can I maybe get a bit personal for a second? What are some of the one or two of the biggest challenges you've seen that leaders have had to overcome? I think, hmm. I think when it's a real shift in belief, mm -hmm. that's hard. That's hard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So can I just give you an example of what I mean by that? Please. Woman, really ambitious, really smart. I mean, like, whoa, watch out. This woman was incredible and highly ambitious in a very appropriate way. I mean, she was, yeah, but she was on a path mm. for sure. And she had always believed that productivity was the answer. Mm -hmm. And she got to a point in her career where she was told, no, actually, relationships mm -hmm. matter. And she was not ready. She, like, had no skill. That was yes. not what she'd been doing since she was quite a young woman. Yeah. And that required a change in belief for her. That was a big challenge for her. That didn't happen overnight, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like... Yeah, that was profound for her. Mm. Yeah. So that was the self-awareness bit? Gee, I suppose you could say that. I think for me, what I actually think is she considered an alternate way. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, it was a way that she had looked at before. She saw some people do that, but it wasn't for her. Yes. You know, she was making a choice about what she was doing. She was putting her foot on the gas. Yes. And yeah. people were saying, please stop. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a change for her. It was yeah. hard. Yeah. And it, it sort of, um, I I was reading something else again the other day that talked, it was, it was, it was I thought it was great. I thought it was really good because uh, as I have seen leaders um, over time, and you, you, you talk about leaders like, you know, Mark Benioff, you talk about um, leaders like Bill McDermott of these big companies that they they are they do have a personality of um, uh, an extrovert, right? In, in many ways, and it was an article that was written about how you know we want to talk about leaders can be all different shapes and sizes, but the reality is the extra extroverts tend to come to the front of the room because they can communicate better. They can talk better. They can you know, extend their feelings better, et cetera. Uh, that leaves then more the introverted leaders um, to the side. Do you have a perspective uh, on this conversation, on this topic? I do. There are plenty of introvert who are 
especially up in Silicon Valley. Yeah. All those all those men, and I'm specifically saying men. Yes. Yeah. They're all introverts. All yeah. of them. Oh my God. Mark Zuckerberg is an introvert. Let's get yeah. it. I mean, so no, I actually see plenty of introverts as leaders. It just costs them a lot, but they mm -hmm. make the choice at some point in their career. Yes. Um they do. They make the choice of like, I'm gonna be tired. It's okay. I can do this. Yeah. And some people say I'm ready to stop. Mm. I know plenty of people. I know plenty of people go, I don't want my boss's job. Yes, I don't want to yeah. work that hard. Like, yeah. no, thank you. Yeah. You know, they're happy doing what they're doing. Yes. And they're working plenty hard, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, because I, I could, I could talk to you forever on this topic um, around communication and leadership, specifically with communication, which is what you're an expert at. Three tips for us leaders on how to better our communication. Okay. Wow. All right. Three tips <laughs> off the top of my head. Here we go. You can, so, you can uh, say number seven, one, eight if you want. <laughs> no, no. I, I want to give you three good ones. So I'm really trying to find them. So number one is something that I want to say is a little miracle online. When you have more than three people online and you're mm -hmm. going to be in a big room, pose a really clear question or give people a really clear prompt and then everybody's on mute for 60 seconds yeah and write everybody including you yep. just stop and write mm -hmm. and it gets everybody to the start line at the same time yeah and it's helpful so yep. there's a tip it's a little and it makes a difference it really brilliant. does yep I love okay it. number two here's tip number two so for anybody who likes to facilitate mm -hmm. who likes to lead meetings who likes to help groups be more productive here's the tip liberatingstructures.com oh my god it is such a gift yeah it is if if you'd like to do anything with groups go look they have magic things there for you look at the Excellent. ls menu liberatingstructures.com uh third tip answer what's asked mm. Answer what's asked. If you're a leader, answer what's asked. Add your stuff later, but answer what's asked. Yes. And be clear and make sure that other people are clear. Mm -hmm. You can say to them, say that back to me. Like, how do you, what do you think I just told you? Because yeah. a lot of times, by the way, you, the leader, you're thinking out loud for the first time. Yes. Yeah, and exactly. you expect everybody to understand you. And you know what? That's just isn't what happens. That's not what happens. So get agreement about what you just said and what are we really going to measure and when are we going to just get clarity. Yes. That's your yeah. job as a leader. Yeah, that, fantastic. That's tip number three. That is awesome. Hey, Tom, thank you very much for joining Next Gen Leaders podcast. Uh, this this has been brilliant. I thank you, really. Thank you. So you can reach out to Tom on LinkedIn, um, and also uh, go follow Tom's podcast, The uh, Look and Sound of Leadership. Um, so, uh, so Tom, congratulations on your incredible success. Can I offer one more thing to your listeners? Absolutely. So there is, I'm, I'm not selling anything. I just want them to know that I have a ton of free resources for my podcast listeners mm -hmm. and they're welcome to it. All Fantastic. your listeners, of course, are welcome to it. The company is called Essential Communications mm -hmm. and the website is essentialcom with two M's dot com. And it's under resources. They'll find it. It's easy and you can take whatever you want. There's tons of stuff in there. Fantastic. Well, we'll put that all in the actual uh, introduction. Uh, so you can actually access Tom's uh, information and resources very easily. So Tom, thank you very much for joining us. It's now 1.48 in the background at your time and 6.48 in the background of my time. Um, so real pleasure. And thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you.